Hello. Science and scientific research is as prone to being muddied by fashion as any other human venture. And I suppose some of you will know about the, the Vulcan hoax, which wasn't a hoax. Astronomers had come up with the idea that there must be another planet inside the orbit of Mercury. It was difficult to look for planets transiting the face of the sun, but they did try and some of them swore that they saw another planet there, which they called Vulcan. And for quite a while, Vulcan was a thing. And then they realised they were just imagining things. Well, that was because they wanted to find another planet there. Now I'm going to talk about, well, first of all, uh, I am going to be talking about this article here, which is a climate scientist who honestly confesses that he left out the full truth to get his climate change paper published. That is, he knows that climate change isn't the only reason for wildfires. Obviously, there are other reasons. First of all, there are careless people starting fires. There are religious nutters starting fires. And by religious, I mean eco-warriors. They, there are uh, mismanagement of water resources in a certain area. California is a particular victim here. There are uh, things to do with planting the wrong sorts of trees. There are uh, cutting down. Well, anyway, there are a whole load of things. But he didn't say that in his paper. What he said was it's all climate change. And then he got his paper published. And this is the paper he published, Climate Warming Increases Extreme Daily Wildfire Growth Risk in California. And he, he tells us it focuses exclusively on how climate change has affected extreme wildfire behaviour. And as I said, he knows and we all know that there are many other factors. But and, and we've been talking about this before. Socialist mindsets. I'm not saying all socialists have inadequate minds, but there is a mindset that society can be fixed using one formula. And this is from the same mindset. Oh, we've got wildfires, so there has to be one answer to it. And this fellow, in his confession here, he is um, he has given himself permission to do this because he started his own his own job. Uh, he's uh, the co-director of the climate and energy team on the Breakthrough Institute. So it means he's had to start his own his own area because he wouldn't have a job in academia because he's coming out with heresies here. Now, I just want to talk to you about the Grievance Studies Affair, a group of uh, Authors Peter Bogosian, James Lindsay and Helen Pluckrose decided to invent uh, an academic called Helen something or other. I've forgotten the name they gave now. Oh, Helen Wilson. And she submitted papers to all sorts of journals and got some of them published. They intended to close down the thing and, and uh, reveal themselves in 2019. But an astute reporter from the Wall Street Journal revealed that Helen Wilson, that was the character they'd invented, did not exist. By the time of revelation, four of their 20 papers had been published. Three had been accepted, but not yet published. And six had been rejected. Good for the reviewers there. And seven was still under review. And included among the articles that were published were arguments that dogs engage in in rape <laughs> culture. I'll, I'll bust that one word out. And that men could reduce their transphobia by anally penetrating themselves with sex toys. They also, one of them, they... Uh, Paraphrased, they actually took Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf 
and changed a few words to make it feminist and published that. And the people who were reviewing it for publication did not realise that. Such was the depth of their ignorance. The first of these, uh, I don't know which one it was, it got special recognition from the journal that published it. It was groundbreaking research. Now, this was... um, This was sparked off by a previous hoax called the uh, the Sokol hoax. And I don't know if they mention it here, but the Sokol hoax was around, um, must have been the the 90s, 1996 maybe. And he was a physicist and he published a paper that was a load of taradiddle And it wasn't even reviewed. It was just put straight into the magazine he submitted it to. And then he revealed that it was a hoax. And a lot of people said, oh, this was very naughty of you. But it wasn't naughty. He was showing them how things can go wrong. And they didn't learn from him. They fell for it. Not the same people, obviously, but academia fell for the the, uh, grievance studies hoax. Academia are not learning. Now, that is the basic point of academia. And they are not learning from their mistakes. And here we have this guy who is saying, all right, I played their game. I got my article published in Nature by pretending that there was only one answer to the climate change uh, situation. Only one answer to what we should do. We should stop people from doing things. Now, here it says uh, in the free press piece, uh, European farmers are fighting climate change through innovation. I'm assuming this is the Dutch farmers who started their own party because their government was so much against them and trying to make them kill all their livestock and stop farming or whatever. And uh, if you've been watching my videos recently, you um, will have noticed that I was talking about how governments seem to be passing a lot of laws that are closing down small businesses by drowning them in not rising sea levels, but legislation. And in the end, the only thing that will be left, and I was talking specifically about rental properties, but it's farms as well. The only things that will be left will be the big businesses who will change the laws to suit themselves because they will be so big, they will be too big to fail. And I'm not sure that the governments actually are planning on this. I don't think they're sitting there in smoke-filled rooms. Uh, uh, No, they don't smoke anymore. Anyway, you get the idea. I don't think they're sitting there thinking, how are we going to close down small businesses? I think they're just getting carried away by the fashion of the day to do with, oh, this is wrong. We've got to make a law. Uh, Instead of saying, oh, that's wrong. Oh, how sad. What a pity. Never mind. We're back to that again. OK, so we, um, we've we got this problem here. And it's, it's a problem, basically, that people are getting the idea that simple solutions will deal with complex problems. Now, I see it in teachers. I see it in the academic community. Socialists do not seem to learn the lessons of history. You will find people talking about... Uh, communism, and they can see it doesn't work, they can see it's oppressive and murderous, and yet they the only answer they have is, well, well, proper socialism hasn't been tried yet. Well, of course it has. But there is no such thing as proper socialism because people are not proper socialists. That's the top and bottom of it. All right, well, yeah, that's it. This guy knows that there aren't simple solutions to complex problems. Good, but he's had to found... He's had to start his own organisation to do that. I think in many cases, universities are finished because the academics are just not learning their own lessons. Okay, that's, uh, that's it for today, isn't it?
I'm Granny Opterix on YouTube, Rumble, Bitshoot and Minds. Uh, please like this video. All the links to my other channels and Twitter and Gab, they're in the description and also links to donation sites. I always appreciate donations, but really liking the video is the best thing you can do. It helps the video get passed around a bit. Also, subscribe, click the notification button if you're on YouTube and share. All right. I think that's about it. Till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opterix design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.